Hey everyone, it is time for our football recruiting report with Otis Kirk. He's joining us right now. And Otis, let's start things off talking about Isaiah I. Uh, I think I'm pronouncing that name right. Yeah. <laughs> well, we hope we are. It's how I call it Zai Time, but no, I talked to him Friday. He he he's 6'3", 290, and you know, he's at, he's at Hutchison Junior College, Tara, but the t- the truth is he's probably never going to play for Junior College. He played at Northern Colorado last season, didn't like it there, ran it, yeah, just didn't like it there, didn't like that. And he went to uh, Hutchison at, and, and, and he enrolled at Hutchison June the 1st, but then they canceled their, they delayed their season in Junior College till till the spring, and he's a midterm graduate. So, you know, he's going to sign in December with someone, probably possibly Arkansas, but he's going to sign in December and he, the, he's going to be at his new school in January. So technically he's going to be from Hutchinson Junior College, but he's never going to play a game there. He has practice with the team. They, He said each practice this fall was like a game because he knew they weren't going to play. So he said they got out there and they got after it in practice. And he, he he's, he's, he's had a good time there. He's a good player. He got a lot of offers. Uh, he, he started three games, I believe, at Northern Colorado as a true freshman. Uh, had a good season. Didn't have a great season, but had a good season. But he, he just wasn't happy there. He's originally from Pureland, Texas. Um, down, uh, so he's a Texas kid. And uh, he's going to be – he's a high major, high divi- power five recruit now. So 6'3", 290, defensive tackle. Those guys don't grow on trees, and uh, Arkansas certainly would like to have him. And I, I think they've got a good shot at it. Oh, that's great. They're getting a shot at Jaden Johnson, though, too. He's a safety, actually, that previously committed to South Carolina. I guess just with everything going on there, he's now looking at becoming a Razorback. Well, you know, when a coach gets fired, we saw this when Chad Morris got fired. We saw this when Brett Bielham got fired. You see it every year. I mean, you see it every well, you do. You see it every year with schools that fire their coaches, other schools come like vultures after the recruits, and, and it's it's. And I don't mean that in a bad way. I mean it's just that's just that's part of the game. Yeah. And and you know, so Jaden is committed to South Carolina, and he's kind of waiting to see who they get for a new coach. But yeah, he's he's looking around. And Arkansas, uh, Arkansas, he committed to them on June the fifteenth to South Carolina. Arkansas had offered him on April the twenty third, and uh, he's got around twenty offers. He's 6'2", 194 t- pounds from Cedartown, Georgia. They're 6-2 and two on the season. They play Arabia Mountain this Friday night at 7.30. Um, so they're going to – he's still playing. But he, and he, he he plays now. He plays both ways. This is a kid that never comes off the field. He had uh, he's got uh, you know on offense he's he's rushed forty eight times for five hundred forty seven yards and five touchdowns. Caught seventeen passes for three hundred thirty six yards and three touchdowns. Has seventeen tackles on defense, eleven solos, a sack, a quarterback hurry, three interceptions, pass breakup, wow. kickoff return for twenty six yards. As I said about Keytron Jackson a couple of weeks ago, in here maybe he sells tickets at the game. You know. <laughs> <laughs> at the admission gate too. I don't know, but no, he does a lot for that team, and that would be a good pickup for Sam and them if they can, if yeah. Mary Odom and uh, Mary Odom and Sam and those guys can pull in Jaden Johnson. That would be a very good, very good get for them. He, he's a real high three star with most of the recruiting services, just on the verge of being a four star. Well, you got a couple of other Arkansas recruits that are still playing some football right now in the postseason. What can you tell us about those guys? Yeah, in the state, by my account, I think there's three kids that's got Arkansas offers that are still out here playing. That's Terry Wells at uh, at uh, Win. They they beat Maumelle thirty eight to six. Uh, beat Nico and and Andrew yeah. Friday night. I'm telling you, and that's not that's not bad. But I'm telling you, Win is a steamrolling. Some teams are ten and zero now. They play Texas County Friday night, but they're on a collision course with PA in that five uh, uh, A Terra. <laughs> That would be, That'd be fun. That would be the game of the year in yeah. Arkansas. If, if Win wins this week and PA wins, Pulaski Academy wins, they're going to play. And, and, and I wish that was a championship game because yeah. it should be. But and that's not taking away from the teams on the other side of the bracket. But I'm just telling you, these are these are two great teams. And but Terry Wells was the first Arkansas commitment. I think we said that last week on here. Be six five three zero six, an offensive lineman. Went down to the U.S. Army All-America Combine last January in San Antonio. It was outstanding. Arkansas offered him, and he 
right soon after that, Arkansas, Kansas, a bunch of schools, Miami, I think, jumped in. A bunch of schools jumped in, but he came up on February 1st to the first junior day that Sam Pittman ever had here, and he committed, and uh, and he is – He's outstanding, offensive lineman. Uh, Mar Marion Harris, I keep call, trying to call him Marion. E. Marion Harris, uh, Joe T. Robinson, son of Elliot Harris Sr., who played here for the Razorbacks. Uh, Marion, Joe T. Robinson, they've got a tough game this week. They play at Stuttgart. Stuttgart is 10 and 0 on the season. <laughs> Joe T is a defending 4A state champion, Tara. And uh, they've lost a couple of games this year, two or three games, but. I think part of that, they've got a lot of talent on that Joe T team. They, I think part of it, they, I don't know, whatever I say, probably not going to be right, but complacent, lay, uh, uh, kind of bored with the regular season. You know, I don't think they really focus to the playoffs. I mean, completely every game. You know, and, and that's understandable. They're so good. They've got a lot of talent. That is going to be a – Big time game at Stuttgart. Stuttgart's 10 0, very underrated team, got a lot of talent. Joe T, though, is just a defending state champion. And I'm telling you, they're not going to go down without a battle. I mean, if Stuttgart beats them, it's going to take a it's going to take a battle. And then our last kid is JJ Hollingsworth from Greenland, a big time player that I saw play a few weeks ago. Uh Jason and I saw him out there when he uh I think you know, when Arkansas offered him, I guess, or maybe when he committed, I don't remember. But anyway, he, we talked to him out there at Greenland. I've been out to see him play, talked to him pretty often. Family, great family. The dad's a Lakers fan, so you know, <laughs> you know we hit up great. You guys are friends. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we hit up great. But anyway, they play, they beat Perryville 49 7. And all the, uh, all the high school experts of sort, they all thought that was going to be a really close game between Greenland and Perryville. And Greenland beat them 49 to 7 at Greenland Friday night. They play at Paris Friday night. That, that, you know, hey, that's going to be a, all of these games. I keep saying that's going to be a great game. They're all great games. They're, we're getting down to the playoffs now where you're getting in the quarterfinals, semifinals, you know, not quite the finals yet, but you're getting there and, and you're getting closer. And so, yeah, I mean, the these are good teams and you just hope. The one thing you really hope for, regardless of who wins these games, is the COVID. It, both teams get to go out there full speed, you know, full strength, and not have to play shorthanded, you know, yeah. kind of like Arkansas did yesterday. You just hope now, because last every time these high school kids lose, will be a J, you know, uh, if they're seniors like Terry, that'll be the last time they play. Now, Amarian and JJ are juniors, but the next, the first time that Terry loses, if he loses this season, that will be the last game, high school game he plays. So you just hate to, you just want to see the teams go out there with full strength. And whoever wins, wins the game then. All right. Well, last thing, I want to talk to you about that Arkansas-LSU game the other day. What, what was your impression? I won't get us knocked off there. So, so I'll kind of keep it clean on this version. Uh, no, I mean, I thought they had their chances to win. Now, Arkansas played shorthanded. Uh, we can debate should they have played. I mean, I I mean, that's not for me to decide. I mean, you know, they played the game, so the fact should have played or not probably doesn't matter now. But the bottom line is, I just wish that I wish I, I asked some ex players in the press box when Jalen Catalan got thrown, uh, thrown out of the game for the target. I mean, how are you supposed to tackle a guy? If you, you know, he goes over the middle and you hit him with your shoulder and, you know, you're both going down, but you hit him with your shoulder. You don't have helmet. I mean, how do you tackle someone like that, Terry? That's what I just, I just want the SEC to explain that to me, but, or to explain that to everybody, not me. But I don't expect to get an individual team, but I mean, explain that to people because I don't know how else you're, I mean, if you go over the middle, I saw my son when he played here in the practice one day, go over the middle, Kanoi Kendi and Jeremiah Harper, who were both hard here, they sandwiched him. He didn't know where he was at for 30 minutes. You know? I mean, hey, that's part of the game. I mean, that's part of the game. And I don't I get the safety rules, but I just don't understand. You cannot, I don't understand how you make that, because the referee that threw the flag waited forever to throw the flag on that. Then they go do it, and, and, but you know, it's like, okay, maybe we should look at this. Maybe that's what he's thinking. Well, then they go look at it and they, uh, they, they, keep, they keep the call. I mean, I, it's just amazing to me. And then the fumble, Arkansas got that ball, but you know, these, the SEC, you know, if you're, to me, the SEC office, you're like a parent. You've got 14 kids out there. 
you know, and people say, well, Arkansas hasn't done anything, haven't got, you know, gone to bowls lately, haven't done it. Hey, if you've got 14 kids and one of them is success, I mean, one of them maybe works his butt off, but he's not successful. Do you not count that as one of your kids? I mean, you can't have that outlook. I hate when people tell me that, that Arkansas, or I see that posted, Arkansas hasn't done much, so they're not going to get. You, it started with the SEC schedule, Tara. It started with the schedule. I agree with that. They, they, they stuck Arkansas with Georgia and Florida. Okay, that would be fine because they don't owe Arkansas anything, but don't lie about it and yeah. say you're doing it to balance the schedule. <laughs> now, you know, that's what got me was the fact they came out and blatantly lied about it, about their reasoning. They had no reason. The reasoning was the fact they wanted to make sure they, they left the top teams with a good chance to try to get two into the playoffs. They know they're getting the SEC champion in there. They want to get that runner up in there. I know what they're thinking here. It started with the schedule, and and the, you know, and then you get the Auburn game where the quarterback turned, picks the ball up. It was a bad snap. He picks the ball up, turns around, faces the other direction, throws it onto the ground backward, and you don't call that a fumble. I mean, come on. and then and then that yesterday. It's just there. I, I don't. I don't believe it's an accident. I think it's on purpose. I think it's intentional. I think they're protecting certain teams. And uh, and it's not right. And I, you know, I mean, like I said, I mean, I, you know, maybe I'm offending people. I don't care. I mean, I, I just think it's not right. I know Sam can't say it; he's gonna get fined. But it's not right. And and there, but Jalen Catline got ripped yesterday. I mean, yeah. there is no justification for that call. I don't care what they come out. I don't care if they come out with their little apology and say, "Oh, we missed the call." Yeah, they did that to Auburn. Big deal. All right, still a nail on the record, you know. Yeah. So, no, I don't like. You got Arkansas out there playing shorthanded, and you can't tell me that every team in the SEC would have played just with that many defensive linemen, Raheem Boy, those guys. A lot of teams wouldn't have played. I'm, I'm convinced of that. But Arkansas goes out there and plays, and they deserve better than what they got with officiating yesterday. And I'll leave it at that. Well, hopefully things go better. For Arkansas next weekend against Missouri. All right, Otis, thanks so much for your time. That's going to do it for our football recruiting report. Appreciate you, Tara. Thanks. Thanks a lot.